Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to, geez, what's today, man? Don't even know what, around the holidays, all the days kind of run together. Wednesday's market Intel brief or situational report. My name is Matthew Buckley, call sign Wiz, the founder and CEO here at Topkin Options. And just to let some of you know, I'm alive, man, that if the, if the hape, high altitude pulmonary edema couldn't get me twice, nothing will. Um, so I'm alive and well, back down here in South Florida, had a, been having an excellent a uh, couple of days in our investment clubs. Let me, uh, men lie, numbers don't. Let me show you exactly what we've been doing. When I flew from Aspen uh, on Monday to Chicago, look at these trades, Monday, from Aspen to Chicago, uh, between Microsoft and Apple, I made 8,670 bucks. Shared that with our Max Afterburner and Hunter's Investment uh, Squadron on Tuesday. Another 4,050 bucks right there out of Microsoft, right here. Uh, and then today, you can see we did an S&P uh, 500 day trade here. Uh, it was today's 37.10, 37.15 at $1.60, and I just closed that for 70 uh, cents. So uh, a total of between Monday hopping on an airplane uh, in Aspen, flying back to South Florida, running around like uh, a geo bachelor, uh, a day or two days before Christmas to get <laughs> to, to finish my Christmas shopping, fifteen thousand four hundred twenty bucks. So we've been having a blast uh, over here in our uh, investment clubs. I am getting kicked in the teeth a little bit, but I, to be honest with you, I don't care. Um, I have a Tesla bear call spread. Yeah, I know. I didn't pick up smoke and crack recently, but the six forty six forty five out to Friday. Um, you know, or tomorrow, I, I don't care about this one right now. I mean, we're right at, what, 645 right now uh, with Tesla. Let me bring up a chart real quick. Uh, it's SPX, Tesla. So I sent that, I sold this bear call spread right here, the 640. Is this thing ripped higher? Oh, right there. I sold this 640 bear call spread, topped out at 640, 650. Now it's doing this range bound thing. I, we, I think we break lower uh, on Tesla, uh, but that's just me. Always got to show your losing trades as well. Also this morning, I bought another 3,000 shares of Microsoft for $667,000 and uh, sold the uh, for tomorrow, the 225 calls, they're up 76% uh, right now, uh, about 960 bucks. So I'm trying to buy those back in case we get, I don't know, some sort of rip your face off uh, rally tomorrow. Uh, but good stuff. Um, I got to be honest with you. Uh, you will remember this moment as one of the defining moments in the end of our republic. Eight months this government has shut you down, forced you to sit in your home, which is blatantly unconstitutional, right? Uh, when they signed the four-page document known as the Constitution, they didn't put an asterisk at the end that says, well, unless there's a pandemic and then all the stuff goes out the window. But anyway, after all of that time, you get this. And I, I don't. Obviously, I, I pay for everybody else's stimulus, right? That, that's how capitalism, oh no, that's how socialism works, right? Since I make too much money, I pay for other people's stimulus, which to be honest with you in this type of environment, I don't mind doing, man. My God, people are hurting in this environment. I have no problems putting the ladder down and helping people out. But for this witch of a woman, two years ago when Donald Trump put in all those tax cuts in, she called a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks, crumbs. How dare this president do this? A thousand dollars. It's a disgrace. It's crumbs. Yesterday, six hundred dollars is significant. That's the face of what's wrong with this country, folks. A thousand dollars is crumbs. Six hundred dollars is significant. But when you're a person like that, you live upside down. So she's right. If you're inverted, $600 is significant. It's disgusting, folks. When I read into all of this, Kennedy Center, $26 million. The Smithsonian, the National Art Gallery. How about this? Egypt, Sudan, Ukraine. How about the, everybody's laughing about this, the gender studies. The gender studies program in Pakistan. Lindsey Graham can go F himself. Like, oh, well, we care about what happens in Pakistan right now. How about we care about what happens in New York City to restaurants that are closed, to waiters and waitresses that have been forced out of work by people like you? Look at all of this money going to nobody important, and there's at the bottom the citizens, you. 
six hundred dollars. Talk to a friend of mine who's a waitress down at Fort Lauderdale who hasn't worked in months. She still hasn't been paid. I, it, she's with six hundred bucks doesn't even it doesn't even it's a smack in the face to us as Americans. This is a disgrace. Uh, what was it? A 5,500 page document, the size of it, War and Peace. The book's War and Peace. Take a look at how thick War and Peace is and how many pages and how many of the stimulus document is. Are you shitting me, folks? This is our country. This is where we are right now. We give more money away to foreign countries than we do to you. I've had it. It's a disgrace. But. Unlike the government, I'm trying to do something about it, folks. I am trying. I am trying my best, man. I had a great dinner last night with my brother from another mother, uh, Sharon Rosario, who's the CEO, the founder of uh, uh, the Warrior Health Foundation. We had a great dinner here in Boca. We, he's helping. We have a great uh, mutual support going on. I'm in the air. He's on the ground and under the water, and we're going to support both. This is naval. This is this is our Navy, folks. Uh, he gave me a flag last night to thank you for all my support. He's helping folks out with traumatic brain injuries and, and doing the Lord's work. And I'm trying, we're, we're going to, we're going to do some great things. So kind of like Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports, right? Government's not helping out. Andrew Como and de Blasio aren't helping out New York City restaurants, but private citizens are. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? And now we have Joe Biden coming in and the Democrats who want bigger government, right? Because bigger government is awesome. It's a disgrace what's going on in this country. That 600 bucks is a smack in your face. A smack in your face. But that's okay. Everything, you know, everything works out the way it's supposed to work out, right? We'll see. All right, real quick. Um, seeing... Uh, some interesting naval movements, to be honest with you. The United States Navy openly published two days ago uh, reports of one of our uh, attack subs uh, going through the Strait of Hormuz, which is, it's pretty shallow. I sailed through that four times, folks. We got pseudo attacked by Iranian patrol boats once. Um, but guess what? They openly published uh, photos of one of our subs going through the Strait, and here comes an Israeli submarine through the Suez Canal. Hmm. As Iran tensions soar. Get ready, folks. I've always tell you to be looking one hand towards the exit or one hand on your ejection handle. Get ready, man. We could wake up. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas with some bad stuff going on. So make sure uh, you're hedged with that. The Global Times really is... Um, it really is Mad Magazine. I, I love this stuff. I love reading this because reading what your enemy has to say about you is insane. This country released the virus on. Isn't it funny at the beginning of this virus, CNN, MSNBC, um, all called it the China virus. Trump didn't. Why? Because he failed, because he didn't want to call it the China virus, because he just pounded China into the dirt with you know trade, uh, the trade war, we won. And he's like, oh, I can't call it that because I'll piss Xi Jinping off. And then we flipped, didn't we? That's what hypocrites do. Republicans and Democrats flip. So when Trump started calling it the China, China, C-H-Y-N-A, the China virus, that's when CNN, MSNBC, and all the liberals frothed at the mouth and said, oh, my God, what a racist you are for calling it the China virus. Uh, the Spanish flu, I can... Never mind. You get it. If you're listening to me, you get what I'm saying, and it's amazing. But China, folks, this is going to be interesting. I'm making a career prediction right now. Under the Harris presidency, you heard me, the Harris presidency, they will move on Taiwan, and we won't do a thing. Trump failed on Hong Kong, folks. I will be brutally honest. I lost friends. I don't talk to family members, some of them, because of my criticisms of Trump, like the man could do nothing wrong. That's a disgrace. That's what Democrats do. Barack Hussein Obama for eight years, you said one thing about that guy, you were a racist. Me? I say bad things about Trump. I lose friends. I lose former squadron mates. I ain't no Jim Jones drinking the Kool-Aid, folks. I'll tell you the truth and how I see it. You might not agree with it. It's the way I see it. You see things your way. China's our mortal enemy. Um, and you know how, here's the ultimate uh, display 
of how China owns the United States. Take a look at Tom Cruise's jacket in the movie Top Gun. On Tom Cruise's jacket in the movie Top Gun from 1987, there's a flag of what we call country, Taiwan. Maverick Top Gun 2 coming out. Guess what patch has been removed from his jacket? The flag of Taiwan. Because China owns Hollywood. They own the Biden family, 10% to the big guy. We need a set of keys for my dad to come to the office to work with the Communist Chinese Party. It's just disgusting, folks. The hypocrisy is stifling. Donald Trump gets impeached for a phone call. Joe Biden actually breaks the law and reporters, what what's your favorite color? Anyway, stocks edge up as data points to uh, uneven economic rebound. What do you mean uh, uneven? Well, U.S. household spending dropped for the first time in seven months. <sighs> hmm. Income has also dropped, but that $600 should be just fantastic, folks. Even poor people, even the homeless guy off the exit ramp of I-95 probably makes more than 600 bucks in a month. It's a disgrace, folks. Yeah, uneven. Uh, I, yeah, there, it, there is uneven uh, economic rebound, but take a look at that. Picture's worth a thousand words, isn't it? There's a good looking W. Implosion, bounce, implosion, bounce, never look back. And with Janet Yellen coming in, our grandma, she's going to kiss our boo-boo and, uh, and put a Band-Aid on it. And we'll, the market will never go down, right? Stocks only go up. Wrong. Stocks can go down. And when, not if they go down, they go down violently. Look at the climbs. Nice, gentle climb, smash. Climb, smash. Gentle climb, keep climbing. Yeah. Pull this leg and it uh, plays Jingle Bells. I love uh, Rand Paul. You're no better than Socialist Democrats. Rand Paul slammed the COVID bill yesterday. He was awesome. He was he was fantastic. It, it was it was good. But to be honest with you, folks, if we have a Federal Reserve chairman who sits on a 60 Minutes interview and says, "I just print money out of thin air. I hit enter, or I print it physically and I just mail it to Federal Reserve banks." Why doesn't each one of us get hundred thousand dollars? Do do the think about that for a second. Well, Wiz, if we all get a hundred grand, businesses might start raising price. Oh, oh, now you see what's going to happen eventually to this country. Everybody remember Weimar Germany? There's a famous picture of a dude getting a loaf of bread with a wheelbarrow full of cash. We're gonna turn into Nigeria, man, where you have a dollar bill with ninety zeros on it. It's a disgrace. It's embarrassing. Anyway, this year we had a good pop, or this year, this week we had a good pop in Apple. Apple shares rise uh, on a 2024 car rollout plan. One of the reasons I put on this bear call spread for Tesla, that's getting my ass kicked at 5,500 bucks loss, 110% loss right now. Let me look at the metrics of this, analyze. I'm risking 10 to make 48, and there's a good probability that I don't. But that's what happens in trading, folks. You play some trades, you win. You play some trades, you lose. But this this is weird. For the past couple of days, this whole, hey, Apple's looking into its own electric car. Elon Musk has come out and done – look at his Twitter account. It's pretty weird. He's like, well, I, I, you know, I wanted to talk to Tim Cook or whatever, Steve Jobs, whenever it was, um, about you know maybe them buying us. And I, they didn't even take the meeting. Um, take the hint, dude. It's it's been weird on Twitter. That's what that's my main commit criteria is for being bearish on Tesla. Is he's weird on Twitter, which is kind of standard. But Apple's like, yeah, we didn't take the meeting because we're going to build our own. Um, this is a must read. Where's my Amazon article? Oh, here it is. This is probably one of the best articles that I've ever read about Amazon, and I love the headline: How Amazon wins by steamrolling rivals and partners. As an American, when I read this article, I was fuming. I was livid. They're a monopoly. They're a disgrace. The disgrace Jeff Bezos is a piece of shit. When I read this article after that, as Gordon Gecko, I loved it. You have got to, if you haven't read this article, you failed, especially all my solo Amazon members. How Amazon wins. They steamroll rivals and partners. Fan 
fantastic article. We're going to brief this on Monday in our solo Amazon brief. Um, you know what? I'll probably text this out or email this out to everybody. This is, I've never, and it's a good article because they go back and forth. You know, how Amazon like looked at this dude's, you know, like tripod, mirrored it, found the suppliers, did exactly what how the guy built it and put it on Amazon 30% cheaper to put him out of business. Gordon Gecko in me says that's awesome. The American in me says that's a dick move and it's illegal. This is so, you know, Amazon ain't necessarily going straight up, folks. So I always got a caution, you know, especially in solo Amazon. I called this stock the Death Star, but guess what? Uncle Sammy can jump in with his size 12 boots. They have been buffaloing around uh, a little bit, but it really hasn't damaged the stock yet. But keep, we'll, we'll brief this on Monday. Apple uh, is. I like this car plan because I was a little worried about Apple with China, uh, but that puts a smile on my face. All right, real quick, last thing. CalPERS, the California pension plan, seeking an investment chief with staying power. Uh, I literally have to laugh about this. At the height of the COVID crisis, do you remember what happened at CalPERS? I briefed you on this. At the height of the COVID crisis, the CalPERS CEO who was Chinese, you racist? No, I'm telling you a fact. He didn't hedge. They, they had like meetings and stuff like that and, and people on the investment committee were like, yeah, we probably need to you know, do the whiz one hand on the ejection handle. And the guy's like, no, we're fine. They lost like, what is it, a billion or two billion dollars. The dude ended up quitting or resigning or whatever it was like a month later. This is comical. CalPERS hired a China dude it could cool it's California, California with a K, the Republic of California. The dude lost a couple billion bucks for CalPERS, and now they're looking for somebody better. Don't call me, CalPERS. If you're that stupid, uh, I have zero interest in working with you. <laughs> so anyway, all right, guys. Uh, like I said, good couple days. I'm up 15420 bucks uh, just in this portfolio. Uh, there it says, see right here, last three days. This is, and these are real brokerage accounts, folks. This is, uh, that is the non-portfolio margin account, which I haven't traded in, I don't know, six months. This is when I uh, put a bunch of money in here and said, you know what, I'll trade with portfolio margin, which gives you leverage through the roof. It allows you to buy 600, ooh, that's creepy, $666,000 uh, worth of Microsoft. Um, it's, it's pretty good. So, uh, How's our year to date? That's portfolio margining, all two accounts. Yeah, we're flat. We're down two grand. We were up four today. Uh, the biggest thing that's kicking me in the teeth right now is Tesla. Remember, folks, in this portfolio, and I'm showing you the one that's doing crappy this year. I'm not just going to sit here and, and pound my chest with the other one. There it is right there, guys. Look at that. SPX, the S&P 500, a quarter of a million dollar loss. Okay. Yeah, I made 2700 bucks today on SP. It's going to be a long road back to turn that red line into green. But folks, I'm honest, man. Absolutely honest. This was a big ass hedge that I put on. We talked about this last week in one of my briefs because I thought we were. Look at this. Whenever we hover above one of these moving averages for a while, we get slammed. We're hovering above a moving average for a while. We're going to get slammed. I got my timing wrong. So again, at Top Gun Options, all I'm going to give you is the truth, the blinding truth, especially on shitty trades. Up, you know what? I'm going to take that. That's not a shitty trade, though. I, I need to smack myself in the face. Whenever you feel the need to hedge or they, the hair on the back of your neck is standing up like, you know what? Uh, I'm getting a little nerve. Man, This I slept better for the past couple months. And you know what? Based on having that hedge on, year to date, I'm only down two grand. Could you imagine? Now let's talk about now, now that sucked, but let's talk about if that was actually good. If I was right and this thing imploded and the mark, I would have been sitting here up maybe, I don't know, half a million to a million bucks with that hedge. Okay. Remember, when I use the word hedge, I want it to lose money, right? Because remember, in this, this, it's hard to switch screens when this other computer's off. But anyway, the other portfolio is up 130, 140 grand. So the, when I put this massive hedge on in this portfolio, I was long like $1.2 million in Apple and Microsoft. So this was kind of, this was my ejection seat for those positions, right? So you know, um, that's one of the things on my whiteboard. I'm staring at it right now to do for the end of the year. I might move everything into one account. 
and just trade, and that's going to make the portfolio margin and go through the roof even more. So I, 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 that's all my list of to-dos. So I think I'm going to shift everything into one account. Here's why I don't want to do that, because sometimes if I have, let's say I have a bear call spread on right here, right, on the S&P 500, and it starts going up. I might want to put the same trade on, but you can't, right? You, you have to, so I actually go over to the other account and put the same trade on. Uh, so that's the, I don't know, we'll see. That's that's on my list of to-dos for the next week. Okay, awesome. Went way too long. Got to get going. Uh, Got to try and wrap a bunch of Christmas gris and make it look like an adult did it instead of a 10-year-old boy. I, I just might pay my daughter to do it. So if I don't talk to you before Christmas, uh, the holiest day of the year for us Christians, uh, God bless you. Enjoy your Kwanzaa, hopefully your Hanukkah, your winter solstice, whatever you celebrate. It is a, it's a fantastic time of the year uh, to kind of look inward and, and to figure out what you're grateful for. I, I get Thanksgiving, but it's a little bit more magical for me for Christmas because I always, I do believe as a Christian that the day might not be to the exact day, but, uh, our savior was born, man. And it puts a tear in my eye. Um, somebody did all this, right? Somebody, somebody did this and, um, there's a reason uh, we're, we're all here. So it's a day I definitely give thanks. And I look around the room and I look at my kids and, and, uh, I know that I'm blessed and I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for you. I'm grateful for my life. Uh, I'm grateful and humbled and honored that I serve this country and I'm going to give back as much as I can, uh, to the men and women who are hurting. Okay. So God bless you. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Uh, and I'll see you guys next week. God bless.